Hello. Today we're working on the second activity in the world building chapter of Learn to Code 2 called Connect and Solve. And this is continuing on uh, from the previous activity where we learned that we could create instances of blocks and place them in our world in order to help us solve a puzzle. Well, in this case, we are asked to add multiple blocks to uh, make bridges that will allow us to get to gems and switches that we need to in order to solve the puzzle. So uh, the suggestions are also that we should use loops and factor our code into functions so we don't have to write the same lines of code more than once, okay? Uh, now, looking at this, it looks like uh, the character, if the character moves straight ahead, he can keep moving straight ahead, toggling switches, until he gets blocked here at the end. And all along the way, it looks like there are indicators uh, that the, not only do we have to toggle these switches along the way, but those switches can be used as indicators on when we need to turn right and handle these little paths that go off to the right to get to collect the gems. Okay, so that will be our main uh, that'll be our main path through the code. Just walk straight ahead. Every time we get to a switch, we'll toggle that switch and then we'll handle the path along the right. Now the problem is the paths along the right. Uh, sometimes there's big canyons in the way here. So the first thing we need to do is um, fill in these uh, canyons with blocks to make bridges so that we can get across these paths to the gems on the other side. All right. Now it looks like uh, most of the paths need two blocks added to them. At least the first and the third one need two blocks added to them. This one right here and this one right here but this one needs just one added to it. So, uh, how can we do this? Well, uh, we could just go ahead and look at these locations and add two blocks there, add two blocks here, and add two blocks there. Uh, sorry, no, we'll just add one block here. Uh, and that's fine, that would be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five different commands. Um, totally fine. Um, that's one way to do it. I like to challenge myself sometimes though and use some you know programming uh, constructs that we've been working on. So I'm going to try to do this with for loops even though it may be uh, even a little bit more code I'm going to try to do it with a for loop just uh, for practice. Okay so that's I think the first thing we need to do before we worry about getting the character to even walk uh, along uh, trying to toggle switches and collect gems. Let's go ahead and build these bridges. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll have put this all in a function. This idea of um, uh, let's just call the function setup world. Okay, function setup world, and then what we'll do down here is uh, the only thing in our main program for a while will be setup world. We'll just call the function setup world. Now, um, we said that we want to try to write a for loop that will add two blocks here, here, and here. And let's start maybe by adding one block here, here, and here. Uh, so, if, can we do that? I'm tapping on these locations to see if there's a pattern in the uh, columns and rows. And I noticed that the rows stay the same, two every time, but the columns go two, four, and six. Okay, so that gives me an idea here uh, to maybe use a for loop. So let's try this for, oh, some variable i in the sequence one to three, because I need to add three different blocks at three, these three different locations. Let's go ahead and create a block. So let uh, a block, let a block equals an instance of block, and then let's place it by saying world.place some item, and the block will be, uh, the item that we place will be a block, the instance of block we just made, 
And the column and the rows here, well, each time we know the row wants to be 2 because they're always 2 here. So we'll know that the column will be 2. Now, how can we uh, use, how can we say we want one at 2, 4, and 6? Well, we have a for loop here that goes 1, 2, and 3. And I notice that if I double each of those numbers, 1, 2, and 3, I get 2, 4, and 6. Okay? So I can put in here at column, I can say that's just going to be i doubled, or i times 2. So the first time through the loop when i is 1, column will be 1 times 2, or 2. The second time when i is 2, it'll be 2 times 2, or 4. And the third time through when i is 3, this will be 3 times 2, or 6. So that should put a block at every one of these, uh, at every one of these locations here. This one, this one, and this one. So let's try this. We're calling our setup world, and we're placing a block using a for loop at each of those locations. Okay, looks good. Uh, we got one block at each of these locations. Now, uh, really, what I'd like to do is maybe, you know, if I were to do this whole for loop, which places a single block at all these locations, if I were to do that twice, we would have two blocks at every location, right? So let's try that. Let's say for, oh, um, I'm just going to say j, a different variable. For j in 1 to 2, I want to do this whole thing in here twice. Okay, something like that. Now, I know this isn't quite right. It's going to put 2 at this middle location, and I don't want that, but it's going to be close to being done. So let's just see what happens here. Okay, there's one block at each of those, and here comes the second one. There we go. Nice. We're almost there. This is too much here. That one's too much. So what I'd like to do is do this little block of code right in here, from here to here. I'd like to do this little block of code every time except in one certain case. In this case right in here. And this case right in here is when I, it's when, uh, it's when J is 2, because it's our second time through the loop, and it's when I is 2 that I don't want to do that. Okay? So let's make an if statement in here and say, think about the times we do want this to happen. The times we do want this code to happen are if I is equal to, uh, if I is equal, I is, oh, so J, J, let's say, so sorry, if J is equal to 1, we always want that to happen. Or if I is not equal to 2, because that's explaining uh, that's explaining this row right here. When i is not equal to 2, uh, then we don't want that to happen. So let's put this block, uh, let's put these two statements in here where we place, where we create instances of block and place them. So now it will only happen anytime j is equal to 1. So it's going to do it for all three rows when j is equal to 1. And when j is equal to 2, it's not going to do it when i is equal to 2. It will skip that, right? because i is not equal to 2 at that point. So let's go ahead and run that and see if that works out. So here's when j is equal to 1. It does it for all of them. And when j is equal to 2, it uh, does it only when i is not equal to 2. So when i is 1 and i is 3. <laughs> OK. So we got it. Uh, it's probably not the prettiest code right in here, uh, but we did get to practice using for loops. In fact, our nested for loop and a fairly tricky if statement here, uh, which had two conditions in it separated by an or. Okay, so there, our world is set up. Now it should be not that difficult to to handle the rest of this. We said that we want to just have our character keep moving forward until he's blocked. Okay, keep moving forward until he's blocked. So let's go ahead and outline the skeleton of this code. 
Uh, as long as our character is not blocked, is not blocked, we want to move forward. We want to move forward. And what do we want to do uh, when we move forward? Well, we want to watch out for switches that we need to toggle here, here, and here for two reasons. One, we should toggle them. And two, after we toggle them, these switches are an indicator that we need to go handle, handle this row here that comes out away from that and go collect a gem. Okay, so uh, let's just write that and we'll say if we're is on a closed switch, then we need to do two things. First of all, toggle that switch. And second of all, handle uh, row with gem. Let's say something like that. Handle row with gem, where handle row with gem is an abstract idea that's going to say, go take off down this row, collect a gem, and then come back. OK? So let's add that in here. Uh, funk handle row with gem. Handle row with gem says, well, the first thing I'm going to need to do is get myself facing down the row by turning to the right. Okay, turning down to the right. And then I can move forward one, two, three, four. And let's use our move command here that takes a an argument move some distance for move distance for and then collect gem and I can do this each time because each one of these little I call them a spur here each one of these rows that has a gem on it or spurs has one two three four tiles in it every time so we could have written a for loop to do something four times, move four times, or we could just use our uh, fancy move command, distance of four. All right, after we collect the gem, we just need to turn around, turn around and head back, which is a move distance four. And then when we get back, we want to end up facing down the main row again. So let's turn right at that point. So we're facing down the main row. Okay, there. Now, uh, of course, we don't have our turnaround function. Funk turnaround. And let's go ahead and say turn right and turn right to do that. Nice. So handle row with gem is our abstract idea, which just says whenever we uh, we'll call it whenever we're on one of these three squares here, we're just going to turn right move four, collect the gem that's down at the end, turn around, move back four, and turn right so we end up facing the way we, uh, just exactly the way we left, facing down this main row here. All right, let's try this out and I'll go ahead and uh, step through my code. Let's see, step through my code. So it's calling setup world, which is adding the uh, first row of blocks. Now the second row of blocks skipping the middle row inside this nested for loop. And there's the last block. Now as long as we're not blocked we move forward. If we're on a closed switch we toggle that switch and we handle the row of gems. Or handle the row with the gem at the end which just moves four, goes down to the end, collects the gem, turns around, Heads back, moving four. We're still back in handle row with gem our first time. We get to the end, we turn right, so we're exactly the way we left. Now we're back in the while loop. We're moving forward as long as we're not blocked. Okay, We're on a closed switch. We toggle it, and we call handle row with gem. Moves four. It'll come down and collect the gem. Call our function turn around. Move back four, turn right, and then come back into the while loop, which says as long as we're not blocked, move forward. And are we on a closed switch? No, so we move forward. Are we on a closed switch? Yes, so we toggle that switch and we handle row with gem again. 
So handle row with gem, remember, moves us all the way down, collects the gem, brings us all the way, turns around, brings us all the way back, then turns right. Then after we turn right and we're facing the way we left, uh, we'll come back and we'll say as long as we're not blocked, but we are blocked. So this while loop will end and we'll come do the rest of the code, but there is none, so that's the end. And we finish the puzzle, okay? All right, uh, a nice short main program. We wrote a function here at the beginning called setup world. And setup world is just this abstract idea that says build any bridges we need to to allow us access to the uh, spurs and the gems at the end of those uh, rows, okay? And inside there, we, uh, you know, wrote this fairly nasty uh, looking nested for loop, but it did the job. And then uh, we just said it really simply, as long as we're not blocked, we keep walking down this main path, moving forward each time. But if we're ever on a closed switch, we toggle that switch and we handle a row with gem, where handle row with gem uh, just sends us, uh, turns us right, sends us down the path, collects the gem, turn around, come back, and turn right so that we're back the way we're facing, okay? Okay, nice puzzle. If you have any questions or you wrote yours a little bit differently than this, why don't you share it in the comments? Um, otherwise, good work, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time.